What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. Lee, last night, live on our live stream, became a Category 5 hurricane with winds of 160 miles per hour. It then strengthened up to a 165 mile per hour storm. Now it is weakened back down to a Category 4 hurricane with winds of 155 miles per hour. Earlier this morning, it underwent an eyeball replacement cycle, and that's mainly the reason why it is weakened. But also look at how much the storms expanded quite in size. It was a buzzsaw last night. Now we're looking at it. A lot of the outer bands and a lot of the uh, cloud tops have really pushed out, even for, uh, pushed out because this is where we were. Like we were at like twenty degree. We were at like twenty degrees north at this point last night. Now look how far it's pushed out. These have pushed out in some cases well over a hundred miles across the northeastern part of it, and it's also expanded a bit more to the east. Uh, as a matter of fact, so. Definitely, this, the storm's definitely expanding in size. There is also a bit of wind shear to the west of it that's maybe impacting its it, that may be impacting the structure a little bit. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it. So here's the situation we have right here for the public advisory: 155 miles per hour. Pressure actually rose considerably to 942 millibars. If we go ahead and show you where we were at 5 a.m., we were at 926. So this is a 16 millibar rise, primarily due to that eyeball replacement cycle. So that's our situation we have right here. Hurricane force winds now extend out 35 miles from the center, and tropical storm force winds extend out 140 miles from the center. A estimated minimum central pressure, 1, 000, uh, 942 once again. And there is going to be some fluctuations in intensity in the next few days, but it is expected to remain a powerful hurricane through early next week. So that's our situation we have going on right here. Here is the, for here's the, for the forecast advisory right here. Interestingly, the NHC is expecting this to weaken as time continues to go on. They're forecasting this to start slowly, weak uh, sl slowly weakening in the next 24 to 36 hours, which I'm going to be honest with you. I'm not 100% sure if I see that because Starting tomorrow, it's going to be moving through the best conditions it's ever, it, it ever will. So we'll have to wait and see on that. I'm thinking fluctuations in intensity between Category 4 and Category 5 are what's going to be going on. However, if it un continues to undergo more and more eyeball replacement cycles, we'll, uh, it will definitely knock the storm back down to Cat 4 intensity. However, it is also that will also expand the storm size even more. And that could potentially lead, uh, lead to some potential problems down the road, especially if the, once this thing moves north of the Lesser Antilles. And if this thing uh, s expands large enough, it definitely could bring even uh, could bring more and more impacts to, to those areas right there. But if we go ahead and show you on visible satellite, still looks like a pretty impressive structure for sure. There is a bit of shear that's battling to the west of it, but based off of what I'm seeing, it's not looking like it's going to really do that much to the intensity. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it for sure. We're going to go ahead and show you the cone on this right here. Here is the uh, here is the cone. Um, okay, uh, okay, hold on, just to, oh, there we go. Here, here's the cone right here. Cone sit, uh, right here has this thing continuing to move west northwest for the next five days. It's expected to stay north of the Antilles. It's expected to stay. It's expected to stay mainly out to sea over the next five days. So we'll have to wait and see. It is forecast to start slowing down considerably on Sunday, and and as as, as the ridge can, as the ridge starts to interact with it up here, and we'll go ahead and show you what we're looking at why it's by the time we get uh, get there. So that's our situation over the uh, over on that front. Recon's been in this all uh, all night and all morning, and we're gonna have another pass coming through pretty soon. Um, here's the, what we had in the northeastern eyewall, which was what supported the downgrade from Category 5 to Category 4. If we can go ahead and pull that up, here it is. At 962, the surface uh, winds were at 132 knots, or about, 150, about 153 miles per hour right here. So that's what supported the downgrade to 155. Completely justified, in my opinion, due to the eyewall replacement cycle. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it for sure and next thing we're going to go ahead and really and really kind of sh uh, show at this point is we have track models lays track models are out it's expected to stay uh, pretty much according to the model stay out to sea for the next five days then it's expected to start to make that northward turn we can go ahead and pull up some operational models as well to kind of see what's going on with that here's the european 
model according to the zero Z right here. Here's the zero Z. This thing continues to move to the west northwest. I'm disregarding intensity at this point, primarily because we're way ahead of schedule. This thing explosively intensified. So, yeah, this thing continues to move. It actually continues to make a bit of a jog to the uh, towards the west. If you keep a look, uh, keep an eye on it. Here's where we were at the twelve Z. Yeah, you can see there's a noticeable jog to the west at this at this point. And this is where it was. It was basically north of the of Hispaniola, far, far enough east from the Bahamas. Here's where we are right now. Boom. So, yeah, there is a, a, di a decent jog. I'd say maybe a 50 to 60 mile jog towards the west. So we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it for sure. And then this thing turns more and more to the north. And... Either and at this point the Europeans either having this go out to sea or maybe impacting Atlantic Canada at this time down the road. Keep in mind that's about eight to nine days out, so there's still a lot of unpredictability. But one thing we need to look at for sure is the 500 millibar height anomaly because that'll really tell us what's going on. As you can see, as it interacts with this uh, this ridge. Over here, it starts to slow down considerably, then the ridge weakens, and then there's a trough right here in the Midwestern United States that starts to inter uh, interact with, which will end up starting to turn, making this thing turn and push it up uh, to the north. And then this ridge, as it starts to move more and more east, will continue to drive this storm as time continues to go on. So it's really going to depend on the strength of this trough right here. The strength has been all over the place, and I'll s sum it up to this. The weaker this tr uh, this trough is, the more west this will go. The stronger the trough is, the quicker it'll turn north. So that's pretty much what we have uh, going on. It's really going to depend on a battle of the uh, a battle of uh, the troughs in the ridges right here. If this ri even if this ridge strengthens quite a uh, quite a bit, which if it interacts with that cold wake, it definitely sh it definitely could. This could uh, this could potentially counterbalance that and have us this start pushing up to the north. We'll have to wait and see what happens on that flank over there. Now we're gonna go ahead and kind of uh, now we're gonna go ahead and kind of corrobor uh, corroborate with that with the G uh, with the GFS and f figure out what's going on with that on from that from there the GFS continues to have this thing uh, to have that turn going on and the GFS is still doubling down on a potential Atlantic Canada and New England impact down the road about eight days out or so so keep in mind it is eight days out we'll have to wait and see what happens uh, as time continues to go on it's really going to highly depend on what happens to that trough and what happens with that ridge it's also going to depend really also on how strong the system is because if it interacts with that cold wake over there and it start and it interacts with well at this po well at this point it does that it could potentially strengthen the uh, the high and this may end up pushing a little bit more to the west so that's a big concern we have and especially considering that this thing is expanding in size right now yeah that's quite the scenario now we're going to go ahead and kind of show you some intensity models over here intensity models keep it around category four to category five intensity over the next five days some have it starting to weaken down to category three uh, some have it going down as low as category one uh, down the road we'll have to wait and see uh, and it'll really depend on that fluctuation of intensity as we were talking about earlier so that's our intensity models we're going to kind of show you the conditions that this thing is in right now First obvious condition is it's in the warmest it's in the warmest water at, that it, it it's in right now. We're at 29 to 30 degrees Celsius across this whole area right here, and it's in the best conditions right here. As we go ahead and look at ocean heat content, the OHC it's entering this area of 100 to 125, 150 OHC. So we'll have to see what it, this thing does with all that. It has a lot of capital to play with for sure. And we'll have to see if this thing re-intensifies uh, re or not because at this point, once it under once it completes the ERC and once it uh, cont and once it's done battling all that dry air that not not the dry air the wind shear that's to the west, which we can go ahead and pull up the map right here, it's gonna basically be in the best conditions. Once it passes through this area right here, it's gonna have great conditions, about 15 to 20 knots of wind shear by the time uh, by the time until it gets to near the Bahamas over here. So, definitely a, a big waiting game at this point to see what happens. But once it clears uh, this bit of wind shear, which honestly I think some of this isn't even wind shear. I think some of this is outflow. Which if it, if thirty knots, if this says thirty knots of wind shear, I honestly think it's around like maybe twenty knots, and the rest of it's outflow. So keeping an eye on it for sure. But either way, 
like the the way that this intensified and this and it wasn't even in the best conditions yet this thing went from a an 80 an 80 mile per hour hurricane to a 165 mile per hour storm in the, in 24 hours which is pretty impressive to say at the very least this thing basically as i said last night on stream pulled a matthew so <laughs> that's what we have going on now we're going to go ahead and show you some uh, some model runs right here. We're, we're going to show you the hurricane models that we have pulled up. We'll go ahead and show you the 6E runs. This thing is kind of ahead this thing's kind of ahead of schedule. This thing has weak uh, has weakened quite a bit according to the halves B right here. It's expected to fluctuate in intensity around category 4, category 5 strength. The halves B is actually having this resurge quite a bit as a larger storm with According to this, winds of, of at the main sea, at sea, sea level at the sea le level, excuse me, of 176 knots. That's about 200 miles per hour. So, according to the hurricane models, this is expected to continue to weaken, and then after that, it's going to fluctuate in intensity for the next few days. The halves A has this maintaining category five strength, even as it undergoes eyeball replacement cycles, and even as this thing gets larger and larger, which is very impressive. And this thing, like the halves B, is keeping us a cat five all the way through the model run, which I will say is highly impressive. But we'll show you the halves A to kind of give you a better understanding. Halves A continues to have the strengthen right here. Gets up to a category five hurricane. Gets up to a 965 uh, five knot system, or about 190 miles per hour. And then this st it starts fluctuating. According to this, the pressure sinks to 918, and it gets up to 973 knots, or about 200 miles per hour. I'm not 100% sure if it's going to get that strong, but I still think 180 is not off the table for sure, especially considering these models, and especially considering it's going to be entering the best conditions it will be. And the storm is also expanding greatly in size as it's undergoing eyeball replacement cycle after eyeball replacement cycle. So this could ultimately end up being a very large Category 5 hurricane, which if that's the case, and this happens before it, enters the, before it approaches the Lesser Antilles, at least north of them, they could definitely see more and more impacts the larger the system gets. So we'll have to wait and see on that. Next thing we're showing you is the HMON. Uh, HMON has this thing kind of... At this point, this was already kind of forecasted uh, to kind of stay at this intensity, although it undergoes an IOL replacement cycle. Fluctuates around Category 4 to Category 5 strength. Uh, uh, kind of does that according to the HMON. The pressure is around the 930s at this point out. But the storm, look at how large these models are now calling for the storm to be. This, like... At this point, this is hurricane force. This is hur about hurricane force winds. At this point, I would say these are. I'd I'd say especially in the northern part. I'd say these are about 150 miles out. So yeah, if if it's just 150 miles out at that point, and the hurt for hurricane force winds, I can only imagine what the tropical storm force winds are going to be with this. So we'll have to wait and see what this system does. What, how it fluctuates in intensity and how it handles all those conditions that it has been given. We'll keep you updated here on the Pat's Path Predictor channel. Be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. Helps us out, helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.